we got quite a few different announcements that have been rolling overhead before the service and then also in your bulletins. I do have a couple of things to pass out. Also, we're just going to be passing things around this, this morning. Both SNAP, uh, Summer Nutritional Assistance for Chatham's Kids. If you are interested in helping with that, you can fill out, uh, put out your information to help out with SNAP. And also for BBS, if you're interested in helping out with BBS, you can fill that one out as well and pass them around so we can get people to volunteer for those. What, um, those all Cora SNAP program, it starts this Tuesday from 4 to 6. So if you, that's the first date that's on that sheet, so if you're interested in that. Just a reminder about the baby shower this afternoon. Also, if you serve on administrative council, have you got an email from Todd yet? No? Okay. I'll send out an email this afternoon or something to, with the Zoom information. We'll have it. If you can make it, for, we can gather here in the sanctuary at 2 o'clock for the charge conference and watch it on one screen. But if you can't make it here at 2 o'clock, we can do it. Um, I'll send out the Zoom link to everybody. You can watch it on there as well. For this called charge conference, it'll just going to take like a max 10 minutes uh, in order to do this. So it will not take that long. We are, some other announcements are here in the bulletin. Any others that you all would like to list off for the good of the group? Yes.
prayer. Holy, holy, holy God, fill us with strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in this world, so that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You may be seated.
summertime, and what's your favorite thing to do during summer? Me. What? Swim in the pool. Swim in the pool. Man, that was perfect. Right on. That's exactly the answer I was looking for, right? Swimming in the pool. How many of you have taken swim lessons before? Right? I mean, if you've taken swim lessons, maybe at the Y or through the city or wherever, but there were different times where maybe a family member taught you how to swim. Well, when I was calling in Riley's days back in the day, I would be... I taught swim lessons. So all that you guys to do is stand up for a second and spread out a little bit. Because when you took swim lessons, or when you take swim lessons, do they just take you to the pool and just throw you in the deep end? No. No, right? You're like, they all look very scared when I said that, right? No, they got to teach you the basics about swimming in the shallow end before you get yourself to the deep end, right? So spread out a little bit because I'm going to teach you some basics of swimming here, right? One of my favorite things to teach, one of the first things I would ever teach when I was doing some lessons would be when you're swimming on your back, some basic stroke that you have to do, right? And I call it the chicken airplane rock. <laughs> right? Because when you're swimming on your back, you got to go chicken, airplane, rock. Right? That's the way you would swim, right? So I want you guys to try it. Yes. Yeah, it is funny, right? Right? So, everybody, uh, y'all are, you got to use your arm. Get your hand down to pockets. Let's go. All right? Ready? Just don't hit each other. Chicken, airplane, rock. Right? Chicken, airplane, rock. Chicken, airplane, rock. Right? Next time you go to the pool, just lay on your back and do this, and you'll go swimming all over the place. Right? All right, y'all can sit down. So those are the basic, that's a basic stroke that you have to do. And when we come to church, when we read our scriptures, when we're in, in here in worship or in Sunday school, sometimes there's words that we read in this book that are hard. It's like jumping in the deep end of the pool. The passage that we're in here Today, he talks to Jesus, says, I have more things I want to say to you, like harder, deeper things that are difficult to understand. But we always remember those little truths that we do. Ms. Beth, Ms. Marguerite, Ms. Catherine, Ms. Patricia, does, they do so well teaching y'all in Sunday school about what those important things are that we have to remember. A lot of times, y'all are in children's church or in the nursery, so you don't hear what I say at the end of church, but you guys might know what it is, but then I'm not the the older kids that's in here help me with it, right? Every Sunday at the end of church, I say, God loves you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Right? That God loves you. There ain't nothing that you can do about it because that's a true something that we always remember. And I know that you guys have a, you were taught a song early on when you were in Sunday school in church or whatever, and Miss Cindy could help us. But this is the truth that we always are told to remember no matter how crazy life gets.
lives by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. <coughs>
we were reminded of how the Spirit tore down the barriers and brought power to all people. And we're reminded today in this story that Catherine read that through the work of the Spirit, through this power that has been given to each and every one of us, we will have more things to say. The Spirit will give us words, but we can't seem to find them ourselves. But if we listen closely, listen closely to this passage of these words that Jesus says, we learn that the Spirit will also give us answers even before we knew that we had a question. The Spirit will force us to take a breath even when we didn't know we were trying to sprint through life. The Spirit will lead us to all truth, a truth that we weren't ready to bear until the Lord led us to it. Because if there's one thing that every teacher told me growing up, it was that Lucas, you've been given two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> yes, through the work of the Spirit, we will be given more things to say, but we only know what to say because we first listened to all that the Lord has to say. Jesus stood before his disciples in our passage near the end of what is known as his farewell discourse. And Jesus says to them, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. I still have more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Which is odd to think, odd to hear from Jesus, because we want to believe that it is possible to learn all that we can from God and about to. God, we want to believe that the Bible contains all that we need to know for life and faith. We want to believe that we have all the answers we could ever need in this book. But we know, if you spend any time in the scriptures, that a lot of times these words bring about more questions than it does answers. We call the scriptures a living word because they speak to us anew. Each time that we come to them, not because the words are different, but because we are different each time that we come to them. And the Spirit always has more things to say to us, more things to teach us. I talk with the kids about how growing in the faith is a lot like doing swim lessons. As I've been reflecting on my three years with you guys, I've been Kind of like when I was thinking about the swim lessons, I was like, I feel like that's all I've been doing for three years, is teaching people how to swim in the faith um, in this life. But you have to first learn the basics before you learn how to swim competitively. We all start from the same place of being afraid of the water at first, and then some of us learn just enough to enjoy our time at the pool or the lake or the beach, and then others of us become like Michael Phelps, swimming competitively. The same is true in our faith. We have to first learn the basics before we can dive deep into the deep end of what the Word of God has for us. Growing up with a mother who was a children's director of the church meant that I did like 15 years straight of vacation Bible schools. Every single summer, that's what I did for at least one week. And no matter what the theme was for the VBS, I can always remember that there seemed to be the same four scripture passages each and every time. No matter what the theme was, we had the same four passages. The creation story, the story of the friends bringing the paralyzed man through the roof, the feeding of the 5,000, and the Easter story. Those were the same four stories that we had pretty much every single week because you never know who might show up to BBS. Yes, there may be a time where you have all of the kids who are always at church every single week who know a whole lot about Scripture, and so you can go a little deeper with them. But other times, you might have a kid who has never stepped foot into a church until that week. We tell those four stories because it gives children the foundation of what God has done for them. That He has created them. He has created all things. He's given them us friends to help one another. He gives us all that we need for life, and he gives us everlasting life. The basic fundamentals of faith that then, as the kids grow up, they can dive deeper into the scriptures. They can have 
bigger conversations. They can study other books of the Bible. They can hear what more the Lord has to say in these words. No matter if you're a child or an adult, we should start with the fundamentals so that we can grow into a deeper love and understanding of God. I remember in college I was asked by a younger student who was interested in diving deeper into Scripture. He had never read before, never really gone to church growing up, and so he asked me if he should start in Genesis and then read all the way through to Revelation. And I know that some people have done that. That's how some people came to learn the whole story. I happen to think that that's nuts to do, to start in Genesis and read all the way through to Revelation. Because how you can read about Cain killing Abel, God bringing a flood to wipe out the whole world, and then Noah getting so drunk that he's lying naked in front of his family, and still think that and all that within the first nine chapters of the book, and still want to keep reading it, is beyond me, of how that you would still read beyond those first nine chapters. My suggestion whenever anybody asks me those things is to start in the Gospels. To start with the fundamentals that this is who God is for the world. This is what God has done for the world through Jesus Christ. This is what God is doing for the world through the Holy Spirit. And then from there, once you get those basic fundamentals, the basic idea of the story, then dive deeper into the Old Testament and into the epistles. We have to start from the basics and work our way out in towards the truth and to learn the truth. I still have more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now, Jesus says. Well, this might be frustrating to hear the Lord say. We all know that there are times that we don't say everything that we want to say to each other. One picture on social media doesn't tell the whole story of how the relationship is going. One Facebook post doesn't tell the whole story of our opinion on a topic. We all carry with us our own experiences and reasonings and thoughts and feelings that result in us having many, many things to say. But we know that we cannot say it all at one time because people, no matter how good of friends we might be, can't handle all of that, bear all of that at one time. We don't talk to our kids about shootings and deaths and diagnoses because we don't want to burden them with grief. We don't know how to start the conversations ourselves, let alone bear the questions that they might have for us. And so we look at our kids, we look at our loved ones, we do this all the time when we say the exact same words of Jesus. I have so much more to say to you, but you can't bear it all right now. We walk this fine line in our relationship with God. We know that we can bear, that we can't bear all truth just yet, but we also wish for God to reveal himself to us just a little bit more. I like to use this metaphor. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it works for what I like to say about this, that our understanding of God and our understanding of technology are very similar to one another. I don't really like comparing God to technology, but the role of it. That the moment we get the newest iPhone, whatever number we're on now, the moment that that phone gets placed in your hand, you are holding outdated technology. Because while it may be new to us, we know that they're already working on the next one, the one after that, and the one after that. That what we're holding may be new to us, but it is not. That there are more things to come. And the same is true with our understanding of God. We can read, study, pray, worship, live our lives and experience the grace and love of God in real and tangible ways that help us to form a definition of this is God to me. But whenever we come up with that answer, whenever we come up with that statement, we should always have an ellipse, a dot, 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 at the end of that statement. Because the moment that we put a period, the moment we say that this is God in the discussion, in the story, friends, God is going to do something that's going to completely transform everything that we ever do. We know this right now, but we know that the Lord has more to show us, more to teach us, more to tell us. 
Our God is alive, He is, always has more things to say. We just can't bear them all right now. And just because we can't know it all doesn't mean we should give up. But rather, it should keep us intrigued, keep us connected to the mystery that is our faith. Jesus reminds his disciples that when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Truth is a controversial topic in our world today. What's real news? What's fake news? What's a real post? What's a Russian bot? Posting on social media, are we sure that we have all the facts before we start to speak? Truth is not just easily accepted anymore, but our scripture this morning reminds us that the work of the Spirit in our lives is always to guide us into all truth. The Spirit of God will always guide us toward the one who is all-knowing the Spirit of God will always guide us toward the one who is all-loving. The Spirit of God will always guide us toward the one who is truth embodied, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through the words he speaks, through the actions he makes, through the testament that is his life, death, and resurrection, we come to know the truth of how God loves us. And that truth is revealed to us layer by layer, moment by moment, breath by breath, as God desires. I wanted to pray that prayer, that one, uh, the start of the sermon, a little different, because it's a prayer that I remind myself of constantly. That yes, I might have a piece of paper that says that I have mastered the divinity, but church, my God still has more things to say. Yes, I might be the professional Christian who teaches and preaches every week, but I know that my God, through the work of the Spirit, is leading me closer and closer toward all truth that I don't even know yet. Yes, I might be the one who is supposed to have all the answers, but I know that the Lord will give me more when he believes I can bear it. Amen. Friends, let us not allow cowardice or laziness or arrogance keep us from allowing the work of the Spirit to have its way in our life. Because our God will always have more things to say. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I've heard the word of the Lord both read and proclaimed. I invite you to stand as you are able and pray as we confess. Our faith in Christ with the Apostles' Creed, which you can find on page 881 in your hymnals, in your bulletins, and on the screens. Church, I ask you, what do you believe?
prayers for the friends and family of Jeannie Murchison, who passed away this week. Sharon. Thanks, Terrence, Billy, and Sarah Elmore are not doing well. Um, his dad went back to the hospital last night, and uh, his mother took a fall this week, and it's not doing well. For Billy and Sarah Elmore, Craig's parents, who are not doing very well, so be in prayer for them. Lord, come and draw near to those individuals. Draw near to each and every one of us to remind us of your strength, to remind us of your grace, to remind us of your love. Strengthen us for this work that is before us to be your hands, your feet, your heart in this community in whatever ways are needed. Lord, help us to step out in faith, to be there for one another, to be there for our fellow brother and sister in all that we do. We pray this to you, O Lord, not because we are perfect, but through the power of your Holy Spirit, you are making us into the perfect being that we were created to be. And until that day comes, we pray this prayer of confession together, saying, For the person of God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in the church. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have heard the law. We have failed to consider the law. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now, as forgiven and reconciled people, I invite you to turn to one another and share signs of peace. <laughs>
Friends, let us continue with our time of worship with the giving of our tithes and our offerings.
you. And there ain't nothing that you can do about it except to let that love live inside of you and to go out into this community, into this world, and share that love with everyone that you meet. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go now in peace. Amen. Amen.